And uh, Cindy's having surgery Wednesday. Keep her in your prayers. Continue to pray for Brother Jesse, Brother Clarence, Margaret, Sister Thomas, Brother Sam, and uh, Brother Danny Cannon, Pastor Adams, and all those folks that we've mentioned. So many people sick. Brother Mickey is still going through some issues with his health. Keep him in your prayers. And I hope I didn't leave out anybody. If I did, didn't do it intentionally. All right. Anybody have a special request that somebody I mail that out? Sister Patty's not feeling well again tonight. Yeah, pray for her. She was here this morning, and Brother Roy says she felt like felt like she'd come on, but uh, pray for Patty. Yeah, uh, Betty Jo, all right. We'll sure will pray for Sister Betty Jo. We miss Betty. And Teresa. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get the first part. I hope it's your last one. Amen? Amen. If it's the last one, it means there ain't no more. Amen. Thank God. That's one habit I never had. Now, my problem would be giving up chicken legs. (laughs) And I need to do that. Just as bad. Hey, we, we get down on smoking, but there's a lot of things just as bad. I mean, too many Coca Colas. Too many other things that hurts your body. But I believe smoking that hurts you more, not as bad as anything. So pray for Sister Teresa. That's a serious thing. And I know it's hard to give up and quit, but by the help of God, the grace of God, you just remember now you made that vow to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll try to make you feel guilty if I can. Anybody else I need to feel guilty tonight? Lord of God, I'll tell you right now. I'm going to preach a message for too long. What you going to do when God takes the excuse away? You better be careful what you use as an excuse on why you're not doing what you should be doing for Jesus. He can take those excuses away. Well, we're going to have a good time tonight. Ain't we? Had you mad at Brother Bill this morning, now y'all mad at me, but that's all right. We'll get over it. Let's stand and go to the Lord in word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the service tonight. And let's just pray that our Savior will be pleased in what's said and done. Amen. That's what it's all about. Brother Tim Worthy, if you would, please, would you pray for us? Thank you. You may be seated, Brother Fox. Anytime you're ready, brother, we're going to sing about the blood. Now, if y'all want to get up and leave, it'll be all right. <laughs> but we love the blood around here. Jesus. Yeah. On dark night of Egypt, a fearful time had come. For one little Hebrew boy who was his father's 
first born son. When the angel of death passed him low, it was hard to fall asleep. While one little lamb stayed on his mind as he lay there counting sheep. He wondered why the young lamb had to die. Why the blood was on the door Through the wind and rain It remained the same But he wanted to be sure So he cried out to his earthly father With a trembling voice so scared Cry, Father, would you please look and see if the blood is still fair He said, son, I don't you worry For the blood is there to stay Through the wind and rain Remains the same No wash away The blood will stand The raging storm has been applied with love and care, safe, secure, you can rest assured that the blood is to pass. Let the old birth of damage Satan's stones had left behind. The flood of endless questions. And doubts that filled my mind. A fear that gripped my troubled soul brought me back to my knees in prayer. Kind Father, would you please look and see if the blood is still there? He said, Son, that don't you worry. For the blood is there to stay. The winds may blow and the rains may fall, but it won't just wash away. The blood will stand. The raging storms is gonna fly with love and care. Safe, secure, you can rest assured. At the blood is still there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I'll tell you a little short, didn't I, brother? Amen. I'm glad the blood has been applied. Amen. I want you to take your hymn books, turn to page 186. We're going to sing the first and fifth stanza of No, Not One. Please stand. Oh! 
people that's going to sing for us. God for these children and thank the Lord for their parents, those that bring them and nurture them in the family of God. And they bless my heart every time they sing. I'd rather my children serve God on the mission field and may never see them again than to see them singing for the world. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's sing Come Unto Me. Page 112. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanza. Then after that, Brother Edwards is going to sing for us. Please stand. Hear the blessed Savior. Calling the oppressed, oh ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come so lonely, tarry, I will give them there. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me. Come Oh, Lord, hear me and 
come and sing, and then after that, Brother Leon is going to come and sing for us. You pray for Brother Edward, and then pray for Brother Leon. Brother Edward has been around the world and back, and he hadn't left South Carolina today. Y'all pray for him as he sings. Well, before I start, I just want to be thankful to be here. The devil tried to keep me away. I was working this morning and got off and hadn't even got home. And they called and said the girl that was supposed to relieve me hadn't showed up, so I had to go back. About 4 o'clock, she showed up. I got home. We locked the keys in the car. Then, <laughs> then we couldn't find the spare set, so probably we were a little bit late because we finally found the spare set of keys. <laughs> so I'm just thankful to be here. You know, God is good. Um, and this song is I've been requested, so I'm singing it. All alone and broken hearted Trying to calm the raging battle in my mind Searching for the answers that my troubled soul just could not seem to find. I saw a flower blooming where there was no rain nor sunshine. And I knew not that this flower would change. The rest of my life I found a lily in my valley I found strength when I was worn I found a place to leave my burden I found a refuge from the storm sunshine I found a lily in my 
valley And he blooms all the time Now if you're down and broken hearted And you just can't seem to find peace of mind You're searching for the answers But your problems are getting worse all the time Just reach your hand to Jesus He'll take you in and break those chains that bind He'll be the lily in your valley And you can watch him bloom all the time He'll be the lily in your valley He'll be strength when you are worn He'll be a place to leave your burdens He'll be the refuge from your storm A place where you can trade your dark skies For beaming rays of sunshine He'll be the lily in your valley And he'll bloom all the time I understood exactly what my pastor told me when I was just a young man, very young man. He said, boys, you better have both gun barrels loaded. I found out one night about 5.30 in the afternoon, my mother said, preacher wants you. And I knew that old girl, no, 5.30 in the afternoon. Boy, I want you to preach for me tonight. You got a revival. I said, yes, sir. Amen. So I appreciate Brother Leon coming in and singing on a moment's notice. God bless you, brother. You come on and sing for it. Thank, thank the Lord tonight for saving me. and I thank Him for the old rugged cross. No, we don't worship the cross, but we, we always look to it to remind us of how much He loved us, how much He gave for us. Amen. Number 11. <clears throat> oh Lord, with my life I want to serve Thee. And Lord, guide my feet that I might see. The pathway that you would have me follow Every day to lead others And bring glory to 
Thy name. Lord, keep my eyes on the cross to remind me of Thy love. For in sin my life was tossed and mercy I'm not worthy of. Help me never to forget With your blood you suffered loss To redeem and set me free Lord, keep my eyes on the cross And Lord When I'm tempted to forsake Thee When this road of faith is filled with deep despair Help me know that when You died You were forsaken by the world and on the cross Your love and mercy were unfurled. Lord, keep my eyes on the cross to remind me of Thy love. For in sin my life was tossed and mercy I'm not worthy of. Help me never to forget With your blood you suffered loss To redeem and set me free Thank you, Lord Lord, keep my eyes on the cross Lord, keep my eyes on the cross To remind me of thy love For in sin my life was tossed And mercy I'm not worthy of Help me never to forgive With your blood you suffered loss To redeem and set me free Lord, keep my eyes on the cross To redeem and set me free Lord, keep my eyes on the cross Amen. Thank the Lord. Sister Linda, does Steve have a CD or anything he can sing for us tonight? Okay, pick one out. Alvin, help Steve down here, will you, brother? And Linda, just give that and let him know what song he's going to sing. Amen. Steve blessed our hearts the other night. Amen. Amen. So for you that uh, were not here, uh, you're going to get a good treat tonight. With somebody singing from their heart unto the Lord.
I struggle alone They say I have nothing But they are so wrong In my heart I'm rejoicing How I wish they could see Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. And the fine family Thank you, Lord For your blessings on me I know I'm not wealthy And these clothes, they're not new And I don't have much money But Lord, I have you And to me, that's all that matters Though the world may not see Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me there's a roof up above me, I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank Say praise the Lord. Amen. God good to us, isn't he? Appreciate that, Brother Steve. Brother Steve, he sang on a moment's notice too, didn't he? Amen. Always come when you get loaded. Amen. And be ready. You know, that's the problem we have today, folks. People aren't ready. They're not ready to do what they need to do for the Lord. Most time you got to kick, pump, prime them, jump start them, everything else to try to get them started. Sometimes that don't even work. Sometimes you have to threaten them. That don't even work. Sometimes you try to embarrass them. That don't even work. But I'll tell you one thing. If the Holy Ghost of God ever gets on your heart, <laughs> that'll work. And, boy, that's what we need today. Boy, we all just pray. We'd always be in the center of the Lord's will and be doing what he'd have us to do. And uh, just keep on keeping on for Jesus. Boy, thank God for his blessings on us. We think we don't have much. We begin to look around and got a roof over our head and shoes on our feet, food on our table. A good place to worship. A good God, ooh, a good God to serve. My sister Woodbury came in there a while ago. She was... <laughs> Fixed to sit down and I hugged her neck. She said, I got sanitizer on my hand. I said, glory to God, you sanctified, you sanitized, <laughs> and one day you're going to be glorified. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, hey, God's good to us, isn't he? Praise the Lord. Hey, we need some of that good old spiritual Holy Ghost sanitizer. Keep the germs out. Keep the devil out. Keep the wickedness out of our lives. And I'll tell you right now, the more you do for Jesus... 
the more you worship him and the more you uh, serve him and the more you pray, the better you're going to be for the Lord. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Well, let's have the ushers to come forward. We receive our offering tonight. And you give us given unto the Lord. And certainly you'll benefit from that. What a joy it is. Brother Max on his way. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel good tonight. Amen. Feel good to be in the Lord's house. I, most of you probably feel better after you got here than you were doing when you left home, didn't you? How many really felt bad before you come to church? It wouldn't be on. I, I, I mean, I'm raising my hand. I didn't, but but now you feel better since you got here. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Sister Woodbury wasn't feeling good this morning and told me she had troubled eyes. I really didn't expect her tonight. But she got here and got some of that old Holy Ghost sanitizer in the bathroom, amen. <laughs> so praise the Lord, I'm glad she's here. It's always a, hey, I tell you folks, it's a blessing to see you in the Lord's house. When you're not here, you're missed. And uh, don't ever think that you're not. And when you're not here, I begin to wonder where you're at. You say, well, preacher, you're... You're not our watchman. Yes, I am. The Bible says that I'm the bishop over your souls. I'm concerned about you. When I say, you fellas ain't tired, are you? Okay. When you begin to think about the responsibility that a pastor has, and the concern that he has for his people, if he's any kind of pastor at all, he's going to love his people. And he's going to be concerned about them. And he's going to, I told somebody this morning when they went out the door, I said, listen, I asked him, I talked to him about coming back to church tonight. I said, you got absolutely no reason not to come back. And I said, I'm not doing that to be mean. I'm doing that because I love you. If I didn't care, I could care less where you come or not. And that's the way it is. Amen. I think a good pastor wants to see his people in the church. Amen? Because I know it's going to help you. It helps me by you being here. So let me encourage you just to do what does please the Lord. Amen? That's all I ask you to do. Just please the Lord with your life. Let's bow our heads and ask God's blessing tonight to be upon the offering. Uh, Brother Donnie Murray, if you would please, if you'd pray for us. Yes. Thank you, dear Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you, dear Jesus. Oh, help us, Father. Yes. Yes. Glory our Father, yes. Amen. All right. God bless you, man.
It's just hard not to. Hold on, this is a tough little fella right here. Man, he's tough as wit leather. This young man, uh, Thursday, was it Thursday? Thursday, he had eight root canals, two teeth full, and a filling. You don't want to mess with him. <laughs> he is bad to the bone. <laughs> he's good <laughs> Amen. I tell you right now, I'd hate to think about one root canal, let alone eight. Woo! My goodness. Well, praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad we got a rich God tonight. One verse tonight, start with, quite a few more to follow. Concerning the richness of the Lord. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 4, this morning we talked about the Lord being rich in love. You're familiar with this portion of Scripture. You know what we're fixing to mention tonight. And that's the fact that he's rich in mercy. I thank the Lord tonight for the mercy of God. If it were not for mercy, we would have got judgment. And certainly none of us, none of us would be here tonight if the judgment of God had fallen upon us. But I'm thankful for the mercy of God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 4 it says, But God who is. Boy, that'll preach right there. But God who is. I'm glad tonight we serve the God who is. You say, what is? Well, he's the God on the mountain. He's the God in the valley. He's God all around. He's God everywhere. He's God in charge. He's God in control. He's God in power. He's God in all power, not some power at all power. He's the God of all gods. He's our Savior. He's our God. So we see the Bible says, but the God who is rich in mercy, His great love wherewith He loved us. Being rich in mercy just tells us that As we said this morning concerning the love of God, there'll never be a time that the mercy of God will be exhausted or run out. He's rich. I know that there's a lot of people, more than we probably really realize, that has a lot of money. And there's a lot of people that can spend a lot of money during the course of a day and they would never run out. Now that's hard for me to phantom and that's hard for me to realize. But it's just as hard for me to realize the mercy that God has for each and every one of us. And as wicked as we are sometimes, that that mercy will never ever be exhausted. They talk about our national debt. And let me just inform you, I don't care who the president is. I don't care who's in Congress. I don't care who's in the House. I don't care who's in any political office. The national debt will never be paid. It just simply is not going to happen. You know why? Because we don't have enough money to pay it. I heard him say the other day that we borrow for every dollar we spend in America. Now this is, this is astounding. This is, this is scary. For every dollar that we spend in America, talking about the American government, we borrow 23 cents of that dollar. Now, can you figure out who we're borrowing it from? If you don't know, I'll tell you. China. China's anti-God. And you can believe it or not, they're anti-America too. Oh, they're our friends. They're letting us borrow money. 
You wait. You see what's going to happen. You see, we think of America being a rich nation and a rich country. And I'll be honest with you, I believe there at one time and it was. But because of the way that we declined toward the Lord and toward God and toward the Word of God, we're suffering for that right now. And folk, let me just tell you this morning, if he's doing that to America, you rest assured, when we begin to go bankrupt on God and we begin to get unspiritual with God, you can rest assured your bank account's going to go down too. Amen? You better be careful how you treat God. You better be careful how you treat the Lord. You better be careful how you take God's money and use it for something that's not, not supposed to be used for. I don't care what, except, well, preacher, I use it to buy my food for my family. If you've got, you give God what's supposed to be His, He'll put food on the table. Amen? Hey, you say, preacher, that's not talking about riches and God's mercy. Well, I, I, this is free. No charge for this. I'm just saying, folk, tonight, we begin, we ought to realize where our riches are, where our riches lie. There's not a person in this building probably would say, boy, if I had a million dollars, all my problems would be solved. If I had a million, boy, I'd put it on my desk as far as it'd go. <laughs> boy, if I owed a million dollars, they ain't going to let me borrow a million dollars. You can forget about that. But you begin to think about all our riches we think about is monetary. We think our riches are materialistic. We think our riches are things that we can touch and feel. And that we can handle and we can see and we can enjoy with our, with our families and with our lives. We feel like that those, those things are right there are rich. And listen, there's nothing wrong with, with, with uh, having plenty. There's nothing wrong with having money. As long as you use it in the right way. But folks, let me just say tonight, we've got treasures that we cannot see. We've got treasures that our family cannot see. We've got treasures that our friends cannot see. We've got treasures that the world cannot see. Hey, we've got treasures unseen tonight. Why? Because we serve a Lord that is rich, not only in love, but He is rich in mercy. You see, the mercy of God did something for you and me that money cannot do. Money cannot buy. You can't order it over the internet. Hey, how about that now? You can't get it shipped in here from a foreign country. But I'm telling you right now, there's a land beyond the blue that sent the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this earth. And to express and to show His love and to show His mercy. And tonight we enjoy that because our God is rich in mercy. The mercy of God is that principle and that quality which describes His disposition and His action in relationship to the sinful and the suffering without merited penalty and, re- and, re- and to relieve distress. Just think how you would be tonight if you have not, had not experienced the mercy of God. You see, we, sometimes we bite our fingernails off up to our elbows. (coughs) Worrying about things and worrying about situations. We're distressed and we're, we're stressed out and all the things that we go through and all the problems that we face. But I'm glad tonight to know that our God it's a God that's rich in mercy and it's been extended unto us. Psalms 103 says in verse number 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. There is enough to go around. There's enough to share and give offer to every man, woman, boy and girl upon the face of the earth. Psalms 86 and verse number 15, But thou, O Lord... Are a God full of compassion <laughs> and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Thank God for His mercy. Thank God that He's rich in that mercy. And once again in Psalm 145 and verse 8, almost the same verse, it says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Thank God for His great mercy. You see, it's because of the mercy of God tonight that we can say that, say that we're saved by the grace of God. 
We see that there is a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There is a kindness in His justice where is more than liberty. I'm thankful for the liberty tonight that we have in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ because the riches of His mercy has been extended unto us. A lot of times when a person goes into a courtroom before a judge, a lot of times they'll say, I'm at the mercy of the court. What they're wanting to do, they're wanting the judge and they're wanting the jury to show them mercy. In other words, they don't want to have to pay the full penalty for the crime that they've been tried for. They don't want to have to be found guilty of the, th- of the things that they're in charge of. And therefore, they lay themselves on the mercy of the court. Thank God. Let me just say, one day we went in before a holy God. The Lord Jesus Christ pleaded our case and pleaded our cause. We fell down and and called out for mercy before the great God of heaven. He granted us mercy. We did not receive what we deserved. We did not receive the punishment, but we received liberty. Thank God we were set free and bless His holy name for that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 17, the light apart. Of that verse says when, says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. John 8 36 says, therefore if the Son has set you free, you shall be free indeed. And that's what it's talking about. The mercies of God knowing that we have been set free. We see in, in Psalms 103 and verse number 7, we, we see it speaks of an eternal mercy. Sort of about the same thing that it talks about concerning the love of Christ. Hey, He's rich in love, certainly He's rich in mercy. And tonight you and I can benefit in the fact of knowing that we serve a God that is merciful unto us and is free to each and every one. We don't have to do anything to gain it. We don't have to do anything to merit it. We don't have to do anything to keep it. Thank God it's simply by the mercy of God. And folks, let me just say, if you got it, you got it forever. Amen? Let me just say, once the Lord saves you, He saves you for eternity. Amen? Now, I look around over this congregation tonight, and every one of us, we're just old sinners saved by grace. Neither one of us was perfect. And let me just inform you, you cannot live perfect after you get saved. And for a person to believe that that you can be saved today and be lost tomorrow, that is ignorant to what the Word of God has to say. The Bible says we're kept by His power. He's not going to lose none. (laughs) Amen? Amen? Now, if a person has really had a true relationship with Jesus Christ and has experienced the richness of His love and have experienced the richness of His mercy, you can rest assured that personal experience will last throughout eternity. It is an eternal mercy. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ is our advocate. He's the one that pleads pleads our case and pleads our cause. Oh, yes, we fail the Lord. Yes, we fail Him every day. Yes, we sin. This old body is still has the old Adamic nature. The Bible says there is a sin of commission and there is a sin of omission. The Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and to him that doeth it not, to him it is sin. You don't have to go out and rob a bank. You don't have to take a gun and kill somebody. You don't have to live like the devil. You don't have to drink all the alcohol you can drink. You don't have to do all the drugs you can do to be a sinner. If you fail to do what God tells you to do, you're a sinner. It's our nature. But oh, thank God for the eternal mercy of God. That once we're saved, thank God, we're saved forever. Now let me just say, you all live like you're saved too, by the way. It's an eternal mercy. It's a boundless mercy. It just simply means that there is no bounds or limitations uh, for the Lord Concerning his mercy. It's a life-given mercy that the Lord shares, uh, sh- uh, shines upon those that come unto him. And what a blessing that is. In the book of Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, the Bible says, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. 
It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassion fail not. Thank God for the fact today that it's a life-giving mercy. It's the forgiving mercy. It's a mercy of salvation that we can enjoy as His children. Titus chapter 3 and verse number 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. We're saved by His mercy. Through uh, We're saved according to His mercy. And God saved us. And we ought to thank God tonight. Because He is able and is rich in that mercy toward us. There is welcome for the sinners and more gracious for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in His blood. Let me just say, because of the blood of Christ... And the mercy that's been extended unto us, we have the assurance, thank God, that the mercy of God toward us is rich in all things. I'm glad to report to you tonight concerning the mercies of God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, what a tremendous portion of Scripture that is. We won't take time to turn over and read that. But I've read it many times and no doubt you probably have too. But the Bible says there in Isaiah chapter 53 in verse number 5, it says, and with his stripes. We are healed. Thank God for the mercy of the Lord. Thank God He's rich because He suffered our torment. He suffered our punishment. He suffered our place on the cross of Calvary. Mercy is extended to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is not more water in the sea than there is mercy in the Lord. You see, when you begin to think about the riches of His mercy... We see us abundant in goodness and truth. Thy sins are like a spark that falls into the ocean of God's mercy. Think about that. Like a spark that would fall into the ocean of God's mercy. Hey, I'm glad to report to you tonight because of the riches of His mercy. Everything and every every sin that we'll ever commit, thank God, has been taken care of. Then we, of course, know this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 7. Not only is he rich in mercy, but he's rich in grace. God is rich in grace. Ephesians 2, 7 says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Grace is love at work in redemption. Love carrying on in spite of sin. Love reaching down to the level of the unworthy and the guilty. Folk, we do not deserve the mercy of God God tonight. We do not deserve the love of God tonight. We do not deserve the grace of God tonight. I've heard the grace of God tried to be described many, many different ways. But I remember what Brother Dr. Harold Sattler said many years ago. I heard him say this. He said, trying to describe the grace of God is like trying to hug a mountain. You just simply cannot do it. Amen. It's just too big. It's just too wide. Hey, it's just too, hey, it's just too much of everything to try to describe the grace of God. But somebody put it this way. Grace. Is God's riches at Christ's expense. Thank God He's rich enough that all these things were furnished through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a blessing that is. The Bible tells us that the grace of God certainly is a gift of God. In 2 Corinthians 9, verses 14 and 15, and it says, by thee, by, by, uh, and by uh, their prayer of your, of you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Oh, what a gift that is when you begin to think about the grace of God. Oh, when it's extended unto us. The old songwriter wrote that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And it's only because of the grace of God and knowing that God is rich in His grace has been extended unto us. I'm glad to report to you tonight that there is grace for every need in your life. The Bible says, As every man hath received the gift, 
Even so minister the same one of another and a good steward of the manifold grace of God. The manifold grace of God just simply means that no matter what it is, that's exactly what the grace of God can be and will be in your life. Amen? Aren't you glad of that? Hey, knowing that we'll not face anything. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us in the, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 9, a familiar portion of the Scripture that was given to Brother Paul. He says, His grace is sufficient. And he said unto him, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Listen, we may go through some struggles, and we will go through some struggles. The Bible tells us that over the book of Peter. It says, after you have suffered a little while. Oh, yeah, we're going to face things. We're going to go through things. But the, just as the Apostle Paul, a great man of God. He, the Bible, we talked about this morning how that Paul said that he was the chiefest of sinners. Paul says, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm worse than anybody. But the love of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God came down to the Apostle Paul. And because of that, the Apostle, excuse me, the Apostle Paul became one of the greatest preachers beside the Lord Jesus Christ that the world has ever known. And Paul says it's all by the grace of God. And Paul even had struggles himself. The Bible says Paul sought the Lord thrice, three times. For him to remove the thorn that was in his flesh, whatever it may have been. Some said it could have been his eyesight. It could have been a number of things. It doesn't really say. But what the Bible is true about this, when the Lord told Paul, he says, I may not remove it, but I'll give you grace that is sufficient to help you along the way. And he's promised you and I, we have the same promise that he made the Apostle Paul. Why? Because God is rich. Hey, God didn't run out of grace when he told Apostle Paul that. Amen. He still had enough for all the others after the Apostle Paul. He's going to have enough grace for all the others after you and I are gone if he doesn't come back. So we see that he's rich in his grace. And what a blessing that is when we begin to think about that. Thank God for the grace. Hey, there's enough grace to finish the course. Amen. Hey, we ain't going to... We, hey, somebody said, well, are you talking about eternal security? Let me just put it to you this way. I, I remember... Brother Jimmy Carver said this, if I'm not mistaken, many years ago. We're talking about the church going through the tribulation period. And let me just say, we're not going through the tribulation period. We're going to be out of here. And you better thank, you better thank your God for that. And if you don't know for sure you're saved by the grace of God, you better get saved. Because I'm telling you, folks, it's going to be a mess like you've never seen before. You don't want to be here when that happens. And he says when Noah was building the ark, and they had the command to come into the ark, he said they didn't have to run the last 100 yards in the rain to get in the ark. It didn't start raining until the ark was closed, amen, the door was shut. And let me just say, hey, it ain't going to start hell on this earth till we get home on the other side. And the door shut, amen. Why? Because of the grace of God that he's promised us. There's grace to finish the course. You know, people may not remember how you start, but they'll remember how you finish. I want to finish well. You know, the devil's strong and wicked. We have to be real careful. We got to be on guard. And we have to be careful what we say we're going to do and what we're not going to do. But if there's anything that's said about me when I leave this life, if the Lord doesn't come back, I want it to be said of me, he was faithful unto the end. He had enough grace (laughs) to finish the course. I don't want to go out sighing. Glory to God, I want to go out singing. (laughs) Amen. I I want to go out swinging. Amen. I want to be fighting the devil until I leave this world or until Jesus comes back. Hey, I want him to let him know I'm in this thing (laughs) until the end. 
Hey, no matter what it takes, I want him to know that I'm in it for all eternity. I, hey, I'm in it until he gets ready to take me out or until the church goes out. I want him to know that he can count on me. I may not do everything right, may not do it the way it should be, but listen, I want him to know that I'm ready to be put in the game when he's ready to put me there, amen. Hey, but I'm going to need grace to help me along the way. And I know he's rich in that and he'll supply it. Thank God for the grace that brings salvation to all of us. Titus chapter 2 verse number 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Romans 5 and 15 says, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of, uh, the offense of one shall many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. You see, there's enough grace for salvation to every person in this world. Acts 15, 11 says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as those. Let me just say tonight, everybody's got to come the same way. You can't get in going in the back door, the side door. you got to come in through the door. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto me, but by, nobody cometh unto the Father, but by me. He is the door of salvation. He is the only way of salvation. He is the only entrance into salvation. And it's all through the grace of God. Grace always means two things. It means God's favor and God's gift. It is the same self-moving love of God, which is consistent in every th- every person, we see that the Lord gives us saving grace. He gives us living grace. And when it comes our time to go home, thank God He'll give us dying grace. I've been around the bedside of some folk that were Christians, and I've said this before. They didn't go out kicking and a screaming and a hollering. They just sort of just went to sleep. When it comes time for them to go. I said I wanted to go out swinging. I don't want to go out kicking and crying and screaming. Because I don't know what's going to happen afterwards. But I believe God gives his children a little glimpse. What's on the other side right before we cross over. Now you can believe what you want to. I just don't believe somebody died and went in heaven and come back. First place if I get over that. I don't want to come back. Can you imagine somebody going to heaven and seeing the Lord Jesus? And then the Lord sent them back? No, 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 no. I know these books been written on it. I know there's all this kind of stuff, but I'm telling you, folks. That's not the way it happens. Well, preacher, you're just narrow-minded. Well, I might be, but... I'm telling you, when I get over yonder and I see the beauties and the splendors of heaven and I see my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, I love you folk a lot. I love my wife and I love my family. But I'll tell you right now, I think I'll just stay over yonder. And I'll just wait on you, amen? Just wait on you. And I'll just have me a good time while I'm waiting on you, amen? And then let me, let me throw this out here too. Some people lose loved ones and they say, well, you know, they're looking down on us. They see what's happening. I don't believe that either. Hey, when you get to heaven, it's happiness and joy and no more tears and no more sadness. That's what the Bible says. Hey, hey, I'd hate to be in heaven and look back and see what's taking place and what's happening in this world. But thank God he's rich in that grace that's assured us that we're going to make it home. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 7, it says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Oh, what a blessing that is when we think about the grace and the riches of God's wonderful grace. It's a grace that justifies. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The word justify there just simply means that we have been declared righteous. We have been just as if we had never sinned because of the grace of God. The grace of God imparts a new nature upon us. Hey, and that's the way it should be. That's what, hey, he makes a new creature out of you. 
All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We begin to boast because we are a creation. We are His workmanship, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Read verses 8 down through verse number 10 concerning what He hath done for us. And how that He has imparted into us a new nature. The nature and the natural thing for this flesh to do is to live ungodly. It's to, it's to do the things in this world and and, the, uh, and have a part in the things of this world. But you see, when we get saved by the grace of God, we have taken on a new nature. I forgot who asked this question, but somebody asked this preacher this question one time. He was talking something on that line. And, and that person said, do you think, preacher, you don't ever sin? He said, no, ma'am, I don't think that. He said, I come to the place that I don't enjoy it. That's when you get that new nature, by grace. We see that grace of God transforms us and makes a difference in our life. And we used that verse just a few minutes ago concerning 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17. Have you been, have you been transformed tonight by the grace of God? Have you experienced the mercy of God in your life? And let me just say, with you, we can experience... These things in our life that I mentioned to you today, every day of our life, even after we're saved. We can enjoy the richness of the Lord's love. We can enjoy the richness of the Lord's mercy. We can enjoy the richness of the Lord's grace every day of our life as we live for the Lord Jesus Christ. If we only had experienced that mercy the day we got saved and then none after that, if we've only experienced the love of God the day we got saved and none after that, if we only experienced the grace of God the day we got saved and none after that, I believe we would be men most miserable. But it's like a river. It just keeps flowing. It just keeps coming. It just keeps refreshing. It just keeps giving us that extra, extra, extra thing in our life spiritually that we can still rejoice as we go along the way. And let me just say tonight, the grace of God and the love of God and the mercy of God is the only reason that you and I can rejoice tonight. The world can't rejoice, but they haven't experienced what you and I have experienced. Do you love him tonight? The Bible says that we ought to love him. He loved us first. We ought to love Him. Let's stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed. <coughs> Brother Edwards is coming to the piano. He's going to play for us. This morning there were several folks raised their hand. There may be some of you back tonight that raised your hand this morning. You said there's things in your life that you know that needs to be dealt with. It needs to be gotten out. Brother, Ed begins, Brother Edward begins to play. If you need to come tonight to the altar for any reason, why don't you just slip out and make your way down to this altar? And talk things over with the Lord tonight. He'll help you. Some have already come. Just slip out and make your way down. Come on. Anybody needs to come. Amen. Just come on, right? Come on. God bless you. Amen. Some of you are going through problems. Some of you are going through troubles. Some are going through heartaches. Let me just say there's grace for every mile, there's grace for every trial. Whatever you need tonight can be found in Him. Brother Dennis, come down here and pray with Brother Roy. I know he's burdened by his wife. Mom and Dad, there'll be some of you burdened about your children. Wife, there's some of you here, y'all be burdened about your husbands. Husbands, y'all be burdened about your wife. When's the last time you prayed for him? When's the last time you pray for those grandkids that's growing up? 
Well, I'll tell you what, you better pray for them. You better lift them up before the Lord. Because the last time you just thanked the Lord for being so good to you. Was the last time you thanked him for that love and that mercy and that grace. Anyone else need to come while these are praying at the altar? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is. Just see folk gather around the altar. Amen. The old songwriter says, come home.